I want to break down exactly how to make a sweet tart dough or a pat sucre because once you have that in your arsenal, there are endless desserts at your fingertips that you can whip up in a snap. Mix one large egg with a teaspoon of vanilla extract together. And when the food processor bowl, we're going to mix one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two thirds of a cup of confectioner sugar, and a quarter teaspoon salt. Just pulse it together till it's nicely mixed. Then we have eight tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now this has been cut into quarter inch pieces and chilled. So we're gonna sprinkle this over the top. All right, and then you're gonna put the lid on and let her rip for about 20 seconds until the mixture really has a nice even consistency to it. Almost looks like cornmeal. And then with the processor running, you're gonna add that egg vanilla mixture through the feed tube and let it keep going until a dough comes together around the blade. Now the cool thing about this dough is you get to roll it out while it's still easy to work with, right from the food processor. So between two pieces of parchment paper, you wanna roll it pretty much to the edges of the parchment, as thin as you can. And then we're gonna throw it in the freezer for 30 minutes before fitting it into the tart pan. Here is the tart dough, nice and chilled, really easy now to work with and fit it into our tart pan. So you can see it's pretty hard, which is perfect. If at any time this dough gets too soft, especially on a hot day, don't hesitate to throw it back in the freezer to chill it up again, because nothing worse than a dough melting on you while you're trying to fit it into a tart pan. I'm just loosening the parchment on both sides. We only need one piece of parchment now. Now to get this dough into this tart pan, there's a cool way to do it that's pretty foolproof, especially if you're a beginner. What we're gonna do is, is a nine inch tart pan with a removable bottom. We're gonna take out the bottom and we're gonna use this as a stencil or like a big old biscuit cutter. And we're gonna press it into the dough. We're gonna cut out a round that'll pretty much fit right into the bottom of the tart pan. All right, now to go up the sides, what we're gonna use is a ruler and a paring knife. Now this ruler is about an inch wide and you want strips that are about an inch wide. Using the ruler as a stencil, we're just gonna cut strips of tart dough I find you need about three of them. You'll have extra dough here, so don't worry if you need to patch it or if you screw one up, there's plenty of dough to work with. Now, to fit this into the tart pan, I'm gonna put the bottom of the tart pan back in and then lift up this nice big piece that we cut out. We're just gonna drop it into the tart pan. There we go. Like I said, it pretty much will cover the bottom of the pan. What you wanna do is take your fingers and really the flesh of your finger and really press that dough right into the corner. And if it smears up the side of the tart pan, that's fine. You just wanna make sure it's a nice tight corner, nice and flat on the bottom. Now using the strips, we're gonna start laying them up, up the sides of the tart pan. What you wanna do is you wanna sort of nestle the dough into these curves. You don't wanna press it and stretch it out. You just wanna ease the dough into that fluted edge and on the ends, overlap it ever so slightly. You really won't see any of these seams in the thinnest tart shell. I'm gonna go around one more time, really make sure it's pressed into the fluted edge and also kind of secure the seam where the sides meets the bottom. All right, that looks perfect. This tart shell now needs to go into the freezer to firm up before we can bake it. And we'll trim it just before it goes in the oven. And these scraps, let me tell you, they are delicious. Don't throw them away. Sprinkle them with a little sugar, maybe a little cinnamon, throw them in an oven, instant cookies. Once the tart shell is chilled, use a paring knife to trim off the extra dough, spray a large sheet of aluminum foil with veg oil spray, and lay it over the dough, really pressing it down into the corners. Then fill with pie weights. Again, make sure those pie weights get into the corners and up the sides, because they'll prevent that dough from slumping in the oven. Bake it at 350 degrees for 30 minutes, spinning around halfway through. Then remove the pie weights and bake it for 10 minutes longer until it's beautiful and golden. Oh, there's nothing like the smell of a perfectly warm tart crust. Now you can see it's perfectly done now that I've taken the pie weights out because it's golden all the way around the edge and throughout the bottom. Now most tart recipes, before you fill it and bake it, are gonna ask that this tart shell be cooled completely and that takes about two hours. However, a baked tart shell held empty will last for a day or two. And really it's so easy to make once you have this in your arsenal, endless dessert options will be yours for the taking. Time to make the rustic walnut tart, which is a breeze once you have your tart shell already baked and cooled. It's gonna start by making, I like to call it the goo. It's a sweet goo. It starts with just half a cup of packed brown sugar. This is one third of a cup of corn syrup. To this, we're gonna add an egg, just a single large egg, a little vanilla, two teaspoons. 
Yeah, the base of this tart is a lot like a pecan pie with that sort of goo, but there's a lot less of it. It's just a very thin layer that holds the walnuts together. Just a tablespoon of Ian's bourbon and a little bit of salt, half a teaspoon of table salt. Now you wanna whisk this together until all the sugar is pretty much dissolved. All right, that looks pretty good and uniform. All right, whisk that till it's mostly smooth and we're gonna add some butter. Here I have four tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted and cooled in my fancy little yellow butter pot. It's my favorite pot in the whole kitchen because it was a gift. Oh yeah, it smells like bourbon and butter, which is not a bad thing. Into the tart shell it goes. And now for the walnuts, which is really cool because you think about a pecan pie, you put the walnuts in the goo and it's all coated. But if you do it this way, some of the walnuts stick out of the tart and it has a lovely look. And it also means that some of the walnuts aren't coated, so they get nice and toasted. Just a nice dual texture. All right, and it's that easy into a 375 degree oven middle rack. It takes about half an hour or so for it to bake through. Hey there, I hope you're enjoying this video. Did you know that you can stream every season of your favorite shows from America's Test Kitchen anywhere, anytime, and ad-free? With an all-access digital membership, you can unlock thousands of recipes that have been rigorously tested by our experts. Not to mention unbiased equipment and ingredient reviews available at home or on the go with our mobile app. Visit cookscountry.com to start your free trial. Oh, this tart is perfectly cooked. You can see it's bubbling, it's souffléed a little bit, but the filling is set and the walnuts on top have started to toast. Now you just gotta let it cool completely and that takes about two hours. The tart is completely cooled and it's ready to serve. Now this is a tart with a removable bottom. So what you wanna do is hold your hand up, pull the tart pan bottom off, and then to separate the tart from the pan bottom, you can just slide a knife or an offset spatula. It should really just slide right out. Have some coffee. Ooh, that looks good. And the thing I really like to serve with this rustic walnut tart is some bourbon flavored whipped cream, which is just as easy to make as regular whipped cream. You have some heavy cream, chilled. We're gonna add a little bit of bourbon, a little bit of vanilla, and some confectioner sugar. And I like doing it by hand, especially if you're only doing a small amount. Just whisk it to nice soft peaks. Now for the best part, diving in. Oh, that's a good sound. It means the crust is nice and crisp. You see my dog coming up. It's because he once stole a piece of this tart and he <laughs> fell in love with it. Oh, yep. Speaking of, fell in love with the flavors of it. Oh, look at that. You can tell it's just held together, those walnuts, and the crust is nice and brown. A little bit of bourbon whipped cream, a little bit more. Yes, ma'am. Right off the point. Mmm. They're such simple flavors. The walnuts, it's toasted in the oven, the brown sugar, a little bourbon, and that perfect pat sucre with just a little simple whipped cream. It's not a fancy dessert. It's rustic, but the flavors are spot on. See you next time. Thanks for watching. What'd you think? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're excited to cook this week. You can get today's recipes and more for free at our website.